and Commission have produced several documents. Uh, several of those were referenced in preparing the staff report. The primary reason for the ban is to protect California's sensitive habitat, including the flora and the fauna. Uh, the argument against ferrets is that they may escape from captivity, prey on native wildlife, and possibly form feral colonies. Uh, we did receive three letters, uh, four letters, in opposition to this uh, resolution, um, citing similar ecological concerns. Uh, proponents of ferrets uh, point to research that showed domestic ferrets do not typically survive uh, outside of captivity. Um, some additional concerns uh, include uh, ferrets uh, may cause a rabies, uh, may carry the rabies virus, um, but uh, there um, there is a vaccine for that. So they're you know just like any other animal that could carry rabies, it could be vaccinated against. And, and the other concern that is brought up by the state is that uh, ferrets do have. Uh, uh, a pro a proponency to bite, uh, but there's uh, there's no re no reports or no data that really says that those occur more than any other domesticated animals, say dogs or cats. Um, if ferrets were to become legal in California, uh, no changes to the Encinitas Municipal Code would be required. Um, ferrets would fit into our existing definition of small animals, which is in our zoning ordinance, and the Municipal Code already recognizes ferrets within the definition of a companion animal. Okay, thank you. We'll hear from the speakers. There are four, Jim Wong, uh, Dennis Lees, Kathleen Lees, and then Pat Wright. Good evening, Council. Jim Wong, Cardiff. I'm here to ask you to say no to this resolution, please. So I'm sure you all know that environmental systems are, they're very carefully, finely tuned, uh, checks and balances, prey versus predator, um, brain versus brawn, reproduction versus attrition. Now, the possibility of an invasive species such as a ferret, you know, would be a big upset to that finely tuned system. Mm -hmm. I know there are, there are ferret fans who write articles such as the one referenced by uh, Councilmember Kranz, thank you, in 2008, that say that uh, there have been no reported cases of feral ferret families. <laughs> feral ferret families, sorry. Uh, and, and so therefore, it's, they're unlikely to form. But, and then they, they uh, point to the, the uh, rabbits in Australia saying, that's not really fair comparison because those were introduced intentionally. But it doesn't really matter whether they were introduced intentionally or not because, because whether, I'm sure that the, the people who introduced them had no doubt that they were unlikely to form feral families, feral rabbit families, uh, but they did, and now they're stuck with them. So that's one article. The other article is the one that's in your package, 1997, that was, that, that was specially um, cherry-picked references to ferrets, for in favor, to be in ferrets, favor, favor of ferrets, but still ended up being equivocal about that because it only offered options not recommendations. And besides, it's 1997, is that current? I mean, science moves a lot quicker than that. Do you remember where you were in 1997? <laughs> okay. Uh, when you use the internet, you probably used a modem, right? When you dial up like that, right? So uh, it's 10 years before the iPhone. So that's how far science has kind of progressed since 1997. So I think that a, a decision like this, which has con pretty grave consequences, should be based on science and knowledge. It shouldn't be based on T-shirts and cute photos and uh, nice anecdotes. Being a pet owner, I don't think it really makes you an expert on the ecology, just like owning a car doesn't make you a traffic engineer, or owning a, a stove makes you a master chef, or owning a computer makes you a network guru. So I, I think this should be left to scientists, and we have the scientists. That's what the California Department of Fish and Wildlife is, is for. So let's leave it to science, not do the t-shirts. So please say no to this resolution. Thank you. Oh, disclaimer, I'm not representing the Environmental Commission. Thank you. Could I have the 
I'm here to save this. I got it. I just held it up and said, I'm, I'm here to save it. Okay. Mayor Blakespear, Council, uh, I'm Dennis Lees from Lucadia, and I'm here in opposition to this resolution. Um, Jim mentioned the rabbits in, in Australia. Uh, they were brought in in, 19, in 1859, and they created a world of problems for them. Un, unrestricted re reproduction, yes, they do breed like rabbits, and the effect of that was, uh, was tremendous. They are now, they started at Victoria. You can see where they are now in Australia. And you notice the, the map on the right. That's the map of extinctions of small mammals that resulted from that. Uh, European ferrets were then introduced to Australia, New Zealand, and Tasmania to control the rabbits. Oh, another introduction. Ironic. Uh, domesticated European ferrets, yeah, they're cute, but uh, they uh, have a devastating effect on, on the birds and mammals, on the small birds and mammals, and they're categorized as an extreme threat in Tasmania. Are ferrets legal in California? No, they are not. Directly from the California Fish and, Fish and Wildlife website in California, Domestic ferrets are legal by, for legal import, transport, or possessed only by permit. Permits are issued for specific purposes, such as medical research or for transportation of confiscated or rescued ferrets out of the state. Importation and possession of parrots as pets is not permitted in California. And there are restrictions even if, even if you get a permit. Uh, Bottom line here, uh, number one, people that buy and uh, people buy them, and supposedly they're supposed to be neutered, but we know that that doesn't always happen, and people buy them to, to breed and sell. Bottom line, they're illegal, and I suspect that you would be violating your oath of office to obey the state's constitution if you resolve to permit them in Encinitas. Locally introduced invasives, we now have nutria in, uh, they've been reported down at, ba down at Batiquitos Lagoon. Uh, they've started in the Central Valley and now they're in, in Batiquitos Lagoon. They're spreading. Uh, Calerpa, you probably remember that from several years ago. Millions of dollars to get that under control. That's why. It, it com completely overran the rocks in, in the Mediterranean. Introduced predators like ferrets are, include rats and mice, and they eat, they, uh, this is a mouse preying on a small bird, there's rats preying on, on seabirds, uh, and I ask that you vote accordingly, that you do vote this down. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Next speaker is Kathleen Lees, followed by Pat Wright, and Kathleen does have a time donation from John Carl. Good, morning. Good evening, Mayor, Council, Mrs. Brust. Uh, I, I am here to recommend that you do not pro pass this proposition. Um, and it says, whereas there's no danger, that's not true. When I was a student in the 1960s, I worked part-time at the Department of Anatomy at UCLA Med School. When used as laboratory animals, ferrets were the most tightly regulated and controlled animals that they used there. They were considered highly dangerous if they were ever to escape into the wild, much more dangerous than other rodents because they're so smart. Ferrets are small weasels. The California Department of Fish and Wildlife have good reason to restrict these animals, and it's not just California. There are also strong federal regulations about this specific animal. Tony has told me that there aren't any more, but I don't know if that's true. I don't believe, you don't believe it's true, but I don't know if it's true. It's bad enough when animals are introduced accidentally, but it's criminal when it's done purposefully, now that we know and understand the dangers of doing it at all. Cute comfort pets are not a, a sufficient reason. 
It's simply naive to believe that ferrets don't have their natural instincts to kill small animals and birds, as well as breed when they have the chance. The staff report mentions that the proponents of allowing ferrets as pets say their studies show ferrets do not typically survive more than a few days outside captivity. Who exactly did that research? It only takes two to tango and start a colony. I doubt my indoor cat would last very long either, but that hasn't kept kittens from being a problem in our local humane societies. Tinker is from a litter that was dumped in an empty lot. I am curious why this is not present, was not presented to the Environmental Commission. I suggest you also check with local humane societies to see if they want to also start finding homes for ferrets as well as all the kittens and puppies they already neuter and find homes for. I don't think you can rely on the proponents of making ferrets legal to neuter their pets or follow regulations. They have already blatantly brought about brought their illegal, illegal animals into our city council chambers and then titter about how cute they are. They are cute, but they're also dangerous and illegal and for very good reasons. And I have a question because uh, January, I just believe this was um, on, the, on the agenda for in January, and we were told through uh, Jeff Flegman that it was taken off the agenda and that he would uh, let, this was through Christina, because we were in touch with Christina Simicat, that he would then let her know if it ever came back on the agenda. So we're curious about how, when this was ever discussed at a city council meeting. So if you could find that out, I would appreciate it. Oh my gosh, I have time. I'm going to then read Christina Simicat's letter. I just read about the local effort to make ferrets legal. I want, this was for the, the January meeting she wrote this letter. I want to voice my strong opposition to this. In fact, I urge you to support the legal and scientifically sound ban on ferrets and other potentially invasive domesticated animals. Southern California is a biodiversity hotspot with many endemic and endangered species and habitats. Human activities already play a major role in habitat and species loss. It would be irresponsible to add to these problems. Ferrets are illegal because they are not native and would easily become an invasive species in our temperate climate, killing native wildlife and competing with them for scarce resources. Eradication of invasive species is costly and difficult. We spend time and taxpayer money trying to preserve habitats. This would make those preservation efforts harder. Our, for <clears throat> excuse me, our former Governor Schwarzenegger oh, already vetoed similar legislation starting that, <laughs> stating that an EIR would be necessary to evaluate, and California Fish and Wildlife Commission upheld this in 2017. While people do have strong feelings about animals as pets, this question is best considered by ecologists due to the serious negative ecological impact ferrets could have in our environment. I have included a few resources below. We need to learn to work with rather than against the reality of the place we live. I urge you to support a scientifically sound policy on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pat? Thank you very much. Um, Pat Wright with LegalizedFerrets.org. Can we get the, the PowerPoint presentation up, please? And I'm really so grateful. I'm so excited to be here. And um, it's so nice to, to have this debated out in the open. Um, and I'm very really proud of Encinitas, and I think the staff did an absolutely wonderful job. By the way, Pat, we don't allow single-use plastic bags in Encinitas, so it will be take recycled. that with you to La Mesa. No, believe me, and we do recycle. I have ferret bags. But actually, I gave them all out, so I don't have any more left. I have two. Um, uh, but, uh, let's see. I can never get this right. right, right okay, there we go. I skipped one. No, I didn't. Um, this is what I want. Anyway, um, when I knew that we were going to be here, and I, in fact, I asked, I said, uh, wouldn't it be great I can have a playpen, and we can have the ferrets here, and we can really, you can really see what they are. And so I asked, and they said, um, no, you can't. And I thought, well, they would say, because... Ferrets are illegal. 
But they said, no, you can't because we only allow service animals in Encinitas. So I thought, ha ha, I'm doing pretty well here. Um, and I could only find one service animal, and that is in Australia. Yeah, it's uh, emotional support. Uh, I really think ferrets don't make that good of service animals. That's not why I'm here. Um, but I did want to add one thing I always think of. The best way to get a bad law repealed is to enforce it strictly. There's no enforcement of the ferret ban. Um, so this is a battle of um, power. It's not a battle of facts. Now, my opponents have said that they want an environmental impact report. So here it's $16,000, $600. It, was, it took 10 years for the state of California to accept it. Here you go. We only need one. Okay, good, safe paper. We appreciate it. You're not interested in facts? Yeah. That was apparent. Um, so anyway, we don't, have, we don't have a level playing field. We are a small group of citizens dealing with the uh, Fish and Game Commission and the Sierra Club and various other organizations. Um, so I always feel like Bambi versus Godzilla, and if, I don't know if anybody knows that old mem, but it didn't end up good for Bambi. Um, but here in Encinitas, we have an advantage. I don't know how your municipal code already recognizes ferrets as companion and domestic animals, which I'm extremely grateful. So um, dealing with the Fish and Game Commission, the opponent said, stress how they, they are very much against ferrets. Um, we dealt with, the old Fish and Game Commission was really horrible, Jim Kellogg. But Eric Sklar is a really nice guy, and uh, he said, uh, you can't legalize ferrets because of this reason and that reason. We totally convinced him, and he said, I don't care if people have ferrets or not. I'm very tired of the don't ask, don't tell. But it's more complicated than you think. Um, this, they would require a CEQA or an EIR, and it would cost, they'll tell you 500, but expect to pay more for that. And when you submit the EIR, you're going to be, we're going to be sued. Can I have, can I have another minute? Yes, let's give him one more minute. Okay, I better hurry. He said, after we, they do that, they're going to be sued by the environmentalists. We don't know who the environmentalists are. Um, but he said, find a legislator. So when the, when the commissioner president says he doesn't care if you have ferrets or not, eh, that sounds like a good deal. Um, so we tried really hard to find a legislator. And you know, because I was here and, and bugged one of your former members. And um, I'm going to say, I think we've been redlined because we, we meet with people in the legislature and they're open to us and then nothing. So I don't know what's going on. That's why we have to work on the city council. La Mesa was wonderful. It was no problem. Encinitas, come on board to the fair legalization and watch out El Cajon because you're up next and we're not going to the city council. We're going to the voters. So I think that it would be a good thing I'm missing a graphic. I don't know what it is. Um, ferrets are legal in 48 states. When is the last time that you heard of any ecological problem from ferrets? Any sort of problem whatsoever, they don't and they haven't caused a problem. So bring, help us get, attract a legislature or even the Fish and Game Commission if they reconsider, but they pretty well close the door. But anyway, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Pat, before you sit down, um, I would like to um, point out that you gifted me a book, yes. and I'm going to let the public know that you and I were both students together back at Oak Crest in San Diego. Long time and ago. And I think you might have assumed that because of my performance in school that I deserve this dummies book. But I gave it to four of you. I want to give I it back to you. I gave it to the mayor. You. I hope that doesn't uh, hurt my cause. I, I want to give it back to you. Oh, I that's appreciate not a good it. I did read a couple of pages. and one of the best books, people who, who get ferrets, people who get them who don't know what they're getting into, which is a bad thing. Impulse flying ferrets were opposed to. Thank you, Pat. Now we're just going to hear from Councilmember Kranz now because you, you. you already had your time. So thank go you. on, Councilmember Kranz. Yes, thank you. And um, I was one of the ones who asked that this be an, uh, put on an agenda, and Tasha supported that uh, uh, request. And we have a resolution. It's a fairly simple resolution. It does not legalize ferrets in Encinitas. It is. Uh, it has uh, five whereas clauses that are one sentence long, and then it uh, resolves that the city of Encinitas hereby supports the efforts of those seeking legalization of domestic ferrets in the state of California. And in order to obtain legalization in the state of California, it does require an act of the legislature and a signature by the governor. So we are a long ways away from 
taking any action that would make them legal and threaten the environment and cause the havoc that many experts or some experts suggest would happen. So um, for me, I think that it's, it's, uh, it's, they do deserve the opportunity to, to make their case to the legislature, and we are essentially um, endorsing them having the opportunity to, do, to make that case. Um, I highly respect Jim Wong and Dennis Lees and Kathleen, so it's never easy to have a difference of opinion with the three of them, but I strongly do disagree with them. Um, I think that uh, the likelihood of any feral ferret family um, taking root in Encinitas is very low, very, very low. Um, the ferrets that become pets are most often neutered and spayed so that their ability to uh, um, reproduce is very limited. They're fed kibble. They, they don't have the ability to survive in the, in the outdoors. So um, as companion animals, people want to have them as companion animals. I've got my cats. I've got my dogs. I don't intend to ever have a ferret, whether they're illegal or not, but I'm not going to uh, suggest that people that do want to have ferrets should have to feel like they're scofflaws because they do. I think that the rabbits in Australia and the efforts to eradicate the rapidly reproducing rabbits uh, by the introduction of ferrets is not a good comparison. And I also think that the situation with bees here in Encinitas, where they were, it was illegal to keep bees at a, at, in a neighborhood um, at your residence, uh, was, is, is similar. There's, there was just not, I think, any good reason to not allow bees. And here again, I think there's no good reason to not allow ferrets. But I'm prepared to let the experts um, address this and let the legislature decide. And in the instance of Governor Schwarzenegger, he wanted an EIR. It's my understanding that there's someone that has, is prepared to pay for the, an EIR for the legislature and scientists in the state of California. So I would move that we approve this resolution. Okay, Deputy Mayor Hubbard. They're cute, but I believe in science, and I don't feel comfortable as a city council member voting to approve, even if it's just to say, hey, we think it's a good idea, when the state does get around to it. It's not something I want to support, so i have just got to put it out there. Thank you, Councilor Mosca. Well, I'll still give my, my comments, but I think it, it's failed because nobody has said second. So the motion was on the table, and there's no second. So it's, it's, it's died of a, se a lack of a second. I would say thank you to the folks that have come out and advocated on either side. I didn't realize um, previously that there was so much passion on this issue. So thank you uh, for coming out and advocating. I, too, think the science is fairly clear and persuasive. Uh, and so, um, and if there's a dispute, perhaps you can argue with the California Fish and Wildlife uh, to do more studies, uh, but I'm not prepared to uh, support any resolution lifting any ban at this point, um, uh, just because I think that it's fairly persuasive. And if you look at the information in our packet too, a ban include a concern that ferrets can carry the uh, rabies virus, concern that ferrets can bite and attack, which can uh, be harmful to small children, um, there's also uh, issues in uh, protecting California's sensitive habitat and flora and fauna. Uh, it's just not something I think that um, I'm willing to support without further scientific research and studies that show that, that these type of dangers don't exist. Thank you. I'll just weigh in. Um, and I wanted to answer your question that it came onto the agenda because uh, Council Member Kranz and then Tasha uh, supported it and they came once or twice, I think tw twice, maybe even three times, and so that's how it got here. But we saw it on the agenda. Right. No, it's okay, Kathleen. You, you don't have to. It, this, I just wanted to answer your question. Well, we were yeah. told by staff that it was not being heard, so when was it heard if it wasn't heard? In it was only heard when, when they came forward and then at the end of the meeting when we asked to put something on a future agenda item. So that. This is the first time. Yeah. Yes. It's on the consent calendar? It's, well, that is what happened, but it's okay. Go to the Environmental Commission. 
Yeah. Well, um, so I am also not willing to overrule uh, our scientific community. I think it's important that we support scientifically sound policy. And I just love the sentence that Jim said. I have to say it. Even though there are no feral ferret families formed <laughs> so far, that doesn't mean that they are not a risk to our environment. Uh, and so it is a question that is best left to ecologists. And so I am not able to support this resolution either. So thank you to the people who came to speak on this. And thank you for keeping such a close watch on our consent calendar. I think it would have been pulled anyway, but it's also nice to have people in the public come forward and share your opinion. So thank you. All right. So I think that's probably it. I don't see any other comments. And the motion died for lack of a second. So we will be moving on from this item with no action taken. I think we're finished.